So let me begin with the notations which we started yesterday. What were the notations we are going to follow? We are going to take H is the notation for order of group. Typically, we write order of group G by notation. This is I am using H just for clarity, mod G is what we would have written but we are writing this as H. P is the number of classes ok. P is the notation which we are going to use for the number of classes and classes we will denote it by C 1, C 2. So, do not confuse this uh, C with your uh, group structure. So, you can if you want you can put a some kind of curly C 1 ok. C P, P classes are there that is one and then I also said that we will use gamma of G as a representation typically it could be an n cross n matrix representation and this will be of two types it could be reducible right and it could be irreducible. So, reducible in general irreducible we are going to denote it by gamma alpha of G ok and these are L alpha cross L alpha matrix representations. I am just using the shorthand notation that. So, the matrices will have dimensions L alpha by L alpha number of rows and columns will be L alpha and L alpha that is the meaning of this. And how many alphas are there for this specific group? Alpha will take values 1, 2, someone number of classes, number of irreducible representations for the group will be equal to the number of classes is one of the postulates ok. Irreps is the shorthand notation I use for irreducible representations ok. Is this clear? Notations are getting clear ok. And then what I am saying reducible means I basically can find an S and bring it to a block diagonal form ok. So, this n cross n can break it up into pieces ok and so on. The requirement is that suppose this is n 1 cross n 1, this is n 2, this is n 3 this is n 4 and so on. What is the requirement? n 1 plus n 2 plus n 3 others are all 0. Reducible means you can find s to bring it to this form by similarity transformation. You can do an s, s inverse you can find an s to bring it to this form. Here no s ok, here you do not have any s, you cannot break it that is the meaning of this. Hmm. So, now this number should add up to it has to be n right. The total matrix is n cross n breaking up into blocks. The total block dimension should add up to be the dimension to start with ok. So, that is one other thing I said is that in principle I can rewrite this as summation over 
okay. All the irreps, I am denoting the irreps by index alpha which goes from 1 to p, okay. A alpha, gamma alpha, okay, for every element. And someone was asking what is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is that if gamma 1 appears twice, you will suppose, suppose I say that let us look at n equal to 3, okay. For example, if you take n equal to 3 and let us say that A1 is the number of times gamma 1 of G, this is an irrep notation occurs. Okay. And how do I denote it in the matrix form? This will be a gamma 1 of G, this will be a gamma 1 of G and this will be a gamma 1 of G. Are you all fine? Hmm? The dimensions 1 plus if suppose this is 1 cross 1 matrices, okay. let us take this to be 1 cross 1 matrix then the dimensions adds up to 3. Okay. This is one way in which you can write this as A1 times gamma 1 alone, 3 times gamma 1 is one possibility for this example. You could also have 2 times gamma 1 plus some other gamma 2. And the only thing is that this should also be a 1 cross 1 matrix, this should also be a 1 cross 1 matrix. These two entries could be different, that is why I put gamma 1 and gamma 2. This entry occurs twice, this entry occurs once. How will I show this? It will be again gamma 1, gamma 1, and gamma 2. This will also be 1 cross 1, 1 cross 1, 1 cross 1 for an example. So, this is the meaning of writing it as a sum of A alpha times gamma alpha, where gamma alphas are the fundamental piece by which you can construct any higher dimensional matrix representation, which can be broken up into block diagonal form. Some of the reps can, reps can repeat. Suppose the C rep repeats, we say that A1 is 3. Here the first T rep repeats, so A1 is 2 and A2 will be 1. Is that clear? It could also be that I get only a gamma 1 and a gamma 3, which is a 2 cross 2 mat that is also possible. That depends on what is this S operation and how it block diagonalizes it. Okay. So, if this is 1 cross 1, the irrep 1 occurs once, the irrep 3 occurs once. So, the block will become a 1 cross 1 and a 2 cross, this is 2 cross 2 and a 1 cross 1. You understand? what I am saying, this notation, yeah, direct sum, I mean technically the direct sum, yeah, I agree. Okay. It is just that you people do not understand that notation as of now, so I am using this. The meaning of this is the block diagonal fashion in which we write. It is not that some of the irreps can be repetitive. Okay, that is the meaning of this. Is this clear? Is the reducible irreducible also clear? Okay. So, remember these two expressions which I have written now. One is this, let me write here gamma of G reducible will be rewritable in terms of this. Okay, where these are the irreps. 
okay. And then what did we do? And we had set of uh, properties which follows for the so I, I showed these things for abelian groups number of classes is also order. So, you will get number of irreps to also be equal to order of the group and then you need to find out the reducible representation also now I put in here, but you understand the notation. A alpha is the number of times an irrep alpha appears in the reducible representation. Okay. Is this clear? Postulates were the first postulate I have already written here that the number of classes equal to number of irreps and then I have one more property which is summation over alpha L alpha square equal to order of the group. So, L alphas are integers and squares of those if I have positive integers squares of them is constrained by the number of elements in that group and it is a very easy problem to find what are those integers there would not be more than one solution. Okay, there will be only strictly one solution. Okay. And then I go, go, got to the postulate of the great orthogonality theorem I am not here to in fact, you can use this great orthogonality theorem to prove all these things I am not proving it I am saying as a consequence you get these as a product you, you can do the proofs if you want, but as of now from the great orthogonality theorem you can prove this L alpha squared equal to H and you can also show that if you take the trace of those matrices. So, these are matrices with M n element the specific element this m n means a specific element of that matrix multiplied with some other specific element of another irrep matrix. And if you take the sum over all the group elements of them it will satisfy this relation that it will be ortho orthogonal alpha and beta if they are not same you get it 0 if alpha and beta are same you also require the same elements m should be m prime n should be n prime and then you have a factor which is h divided by the dimensions of those irreps l alpha is the dimension for the irrep alpha l beta is the matrix dimension for irrep beta is this clear. So, this is something which I do not want you to memorize you can put it in your formula sheet everything you can put it in the formula sheet okay you don't need to memorize and from this you can start playing around taking the trace so we defined character character alpha of g as trace of gamma alpha of g right this is the notation we have So, you can play around on this great orthogonality theorem by taking a trace and then you can derive summation over g chi alpha of g chi beta of g to be equal to h times delta alpha beta. Okay. Is this clear? Are you all following? So, the characters are orthogonal if they are different irreps and you have to sum up over all these elements and then do that. Equivalently since the character within the class is same okay, you could replace this by summation over classes 1 to p number of elements in the class i and then you have a character for the irrep alpha for a candidate in that class which you can take as formally as c i and chi beta for 
the candidate in the same ith class ok. And this will also be exactly h times delta r. So, these two are equivalent statement instead of doing it over summation over group elements you can do it by taking one element in the conjugacy class, but put the number of elements in the conjugacy class as a multiplicative factor. Is that clear? So, that is what I have written in the next uh, equation ok. So, now comes the writing the character table using these properties ok. So, C 2 V was the first example we took and here you had E then you had a C 2 then sigma x z which I will call it as sigma v and then I will call sigma v c 2 ok. So, this is nothing but sigma x z I think this one sigma y z both are equivalent but. So, first of all we need to determine how many alphas are there ok. P for this case is it is an abelian group number of classes is also equal to the order of the group P is H ok. So, which means L 1 L 2 up to L H correct and we need to satisfy this condition. So, summation over alpha 1 to H L alpha squared has to be equal to 4 right in this case it is 4. This is an abelian group may be I should just keep it to 4 ok I am doing it for this abelian. So, what is the solution for this? What is the possibilities for this? Can you have a two dimensional matrix? Everything should be non zero there should be 4 non trivial at least one cross one. So, the solution is that you can have a gamma 1 which is 1 cross 1, gamma 2 which is 1 cross 1, gamma 3 which is 1 cross 1 and gamma 4 which is 1 cross 1 ok. The 4 irreps have to be each of the irreps have to be only one dimensional. So, let us do the C 3 V also here identity 1 conjugacy class as C 3 C 3 squared the second conjugacy class as sigma V sigma V C 3 sigma V C 3 squared ok. So, in this case what is the classes number of classes 1 2 and 3 right. So, you have p equal to 3. So, you will have L 1 L 2 L 3 there will be 3 irreps what are the dimensions summation over L alpha squared from alpha equal to 1 to 3 should add up to give you order of the group is 6. So, now tell me what are the uh, representations possible here 1 1 and 2 1 1 and 2 anything else possible nothing right these are the only possible. So, you will have a one dimensional representation another one dimensional representation and a two dimensional representative and then we can write the characters of these representation elements ok. I said that we are going to take this to be the unit representation which is trivial representation I am going to blindly put it as 1 1 1 1. 
here also we will write the characters. So, now I am writing the characters here. Okay. So, entries which I am writing are characters, characters of which irrep to remember these irreps I have denoted it here. So, this one will also be 1, 1 and 1. Okay. And now, I need to fill the complete table. Last time I tried to write the irrefs by looking at a representation. Now, I am going to use these identities to fix the table. Okay. So, using these identities part of the properties we have seen that there are 4 irrefs for C 2 V and there are 3 irrefs for C 3 V and one of the irreps in C 3 V is 2 cross 2 matrix. Hmm? 1 1 1 1 is like a trivial see if you can put any group to have identity element every element to be identity element any multiplication table will be satisfied right. So, that is like a trivial representation as a matrix I can put 1 1 1 1 and make the whole multiplication table to be satisfied. I agree, I agree. So, that is another way of saying this is at, at least I wrote last time if you do a rotation about z axis the matrix representation is just 1 1 1 1 that is another way of saying. Okay. So, so that is a trivial representation or unit representation as we call it. Next thing is I need to fix these things the characters. So, inside whatever I am writing I have to write the character for representation 2, I do not know what notation I used here. So, I have used character for alpha 2 for identity element, character for the irrep for the C 2 element and so on. Okay. I need to fill this, I have not done it. Yeah. How do we fill it? We just use this property, the product and sum it up over all elements should be orthogonal because one irrep is a unit representation other irrep is a non trivial representation. So, let us fill it only thing what you have to remember is for identity element there is nothing you can do whatever is the character it has to be if it is 1 cross 1 matrix it is 1 if it is 2 cross 2 matrix it is 2. So, the character for the identity element you can write blindly it is just dimension of that matrix right trace which will give you the dimension. So, this is actually L 1 is 1, L 2 is 1, L 3 is 2. So, similarly here you will have so this part is 1 1 1 no change. Okay. Now, I can play around with this. C 2. A thing is that property can be done for alpha refers to a row, beta refers to another row. If alpha is not equal to beta, then those two rows have to be orthogonal. So, you have various conditions. What are the conditions? You will have A plus B plus C plus 1 has to be 0 and you can try and play around what all you can do because the products also we have to take. It is a 1 cross 1 matrix entries should be either 1 or minus 1. Okay and you can play around and try and fix this. Okay. So, so, you can try and see that suppose I put this as 1 these two has to be minus 1, it is a simple way to check it. Here also I could put minus 1 and make one of them to be minus 1. Any other possibility I have missed out. These are the only non trivial possibilities I can have, right. 
So, basically what you are seeing is that this multiplied with this should also be 0. We did 3 of them last in the last class by looking at it as a x axis, y axis and z axis right. We also have a fourth one, I do not know which one is the fourth one, but this fourth one which I have is kind of very different, but still it is orthogonal to this as well as this and this. Is that right? Are you all with me? I have just used that property and I am just playing around with the numbers. What about here? What about here? Someone help me, this should be A and B. not just a, you have to multiply by a 2 and then 3 times b has to be 0. I am just multiplying this with this, alpha is this one and beta is this one, I am using this, this one, this relation. So, n 1 is 1, n 2 is 2, n 3 is 3. There is also one more requirement. What is the other requirement? You could just take this particular row alpha and beta to be same, then you will have it has to be 6. Okay. So, you have two conditions and then figure it out what is the best a and b have to be some integers see which is the best one which will fit to this. Okay. So, which one will fit? A squared equal to B squared has to be 1, is that right? So, we will have A 1, very good. Now, let us come to this. So, just taking the square of this alpha and beta to be same will give you the square. So, that will be 4 plus 2 times a prime squared plus 3 times b prime squared, it has to be equal to 6. And what is the next condition? I could just play around with this. 2 plus 2 a prime minus 3 b prime has to be 0. One more you can write 2 plus 2 a prime plus 3 b prime has to be 0 by multiplying this with this. Clearly these two equation will tell you what is the solution b prime has to be 0. So, B prime has to be 0 and is it satisfying that other condition? Yes, A prime could be plus or minus 1, but then this condition will tell you minus 1. Okay. There would not be ambiguity even though I do not know how to prove it, but case by case when I take the discrete groups, I will find that the character table is unique. So, whatever I have written today is a character table for C 2 V, one is an abelian group, C 3 V is another group which is not abelian and you do see that as you go to, as you go from abelian, abelian will always have only one cross one. What is the reason? It has to satisfy this condition and there will be the same number of elements in the abelian group, the only solution is 
all the L alpha has to be 1. Okay. You cannot put any L alpha more than 1 cross 1 matrices. Okay. So, abelian group the irreducible representation is always going to be 1 dimensional. But in the non abelian you can have one dimensional, you can have two dimensional, it could also have more dimensional matrices. In this particular case with these orthogonality criteria, it turns out that you will have irreps where there are two one dimensional, two different one dimensional irrep, one is a trivial unit representation, another one is a non trivial representation which is also one cross one, but you also allow for a two cross two non trivial irreducible representation. Okay. Is this clear? Okay. So, that is what I have done. The same thing you could have done it for the symmetric group of degree 3, there is no change. How will you do it for the symmetric group of degree 3? This is isomorphic to symmetric group of degree 3, right. You can represent these classes by diagrams. This class has 3 1 cycles, right. This class has somebody 1 3 cycle, am I right? Am I right? And this one is. 1 1 cycle and 1 2 cycle. You are all with me? Okay. So, in the context of symmetric group, these irreps can also be represented by the same diagrams with a different meaning. Here, if I ask you how many elements are there for this diagram you know what to do, right. You have done this, you look at how many cycles are there and we have a formula. Similarly, unit representations are always denoted by this diagram for the symmetric group, okay. do not confuse it with any other group. Not every group will have the symmetric group of degree n to do this. Whatever I am doing it for symmetric group of degree 3, you could do it for 4, 5 and all, but C 3 V happens to be isomorphic. So, this diagram seems to match, but in general I cannot write any diagrams here. Okay. For any discrete group, point group I cannot write a diagram, but at least for symmetric group I can write a diagram. Okay. So, there is another diagram which is this and there is a diagram which is this. Now, you can ask a question why should I use this diagram structure which is how do I know that looking at this diagram that it is two dimensional matrices. It is not obvious from here, I could have put this here right. So, how do I know that this is two dimension, this is one dimension this is one dimension. Okay. So, let me just review on that. So, this diagram is called symmetrizer. This diagram is called anti symmetrize. Okay. But you can also have mixed diagrams, only requirement is that the number of boxes as it goes into the second row should be at most equal to that, that is the convention we are going to follow and you know you can have this. So, this is what I will call it as a mixed, why mixed? It is not totally symmetric, 
it is not totally anti symmetric, but it has some of them are symmetric, some of them are anti symmetric and you mix and match. Okay. So, these are called mixed irreps. Okay. So, this is anti symmetric irrep, this, this procedure is called symmetrizer. So, I can say that this is totally symmetric. Irrep, this is totally anti symmetric irrep. And this is some mixed irreps. Okay. Now, my claim is that dimension of 3 box is 1, which means that irrep is a 1 cross 1 representation. Then I said that dimension of this 1 is 1, dimension of this 1 is 2, this is what I am claiming. One of the ways you can see is that symmetric group of objects 3 you are allowed to put in every box one of the objects. You can put object 1 here, object 2 here and object 3 that is it. There is no other possibility left that is why it is one dimension. Here also you can put object 1 here, object 2 here, object 3 here. You will ask can I not put object 3 here, object 1 and object 2 but it is a totally symmetric or you can take it to be identical objects, you are doing total symmetry. Okay. Whether you call the first box, second box, third box or third box, first box, second box does not really matter because it is totally symmetric. Similarly, the same thing, this is the only option. When it comes here, what happens? You can allow 1 and 2 to be symmetric and 1 and 3 to be anti symmetric right this is one possibility but you can also have one more possibility which is 1 and 3 and 1 and 2 okay. is there any more possibilities you can ask but I am trying to tell you that if you try to do that you can show it to be a linear combination of these two, it is not independent. Okay. So, these two are the two independent possibilities of putting the three objects in a mixed diagram. Okay. So, that is why it is two, but now if I start doing this, this will be for some let us say n objects going to become tedious. Again like conjugacy class I said there is a formula which will tell you if you had a breaking up of cycles what is the number of elements in the conjugacy class you had a nice expression combinatoric expression. Similarly, there is also an expression for how to determine number of or the dimensions of the irrep for the permutation or symmetric groups of degree 3 or more degree n also there is a formula which I am going to show and then I will explain it. Okay, but this is the motivation and the irreps can be shown exactly like the diagrams which you have here, but the meaning there is 3 1 cycles. 1 3 cycle, 1 1 cycle and 1 2 cycle. Here it is totally symmetric, totally anti symmetric and a mixed representation, mixed representation will be 2 dimensional, there will be a 2 cross 2 matrix and this these two will be 1 dimensional that is why it is a 1 cross 1 matrix. Is this clear?